unit is all about growing fodder for livestock farmers. This is hydroponics fodder unit for livestock. If you have your chicken, pigs, uh, cows, goats, this is the ideal feeding system uh, for livestock. Uh, the beauty of hydroponics fodder is that it grows within seven days. So it's a seven day cycle, meaning you, um, you get to save on time, you're going to get the conventional feeds and all that. So if you're feeding your chicken, normally you feed at day four. If you're feeding your uh, pigs, you feed at day six. If you're feeding your cows, you feed at day seven. So uh, the process begins when you, you have to wash your seeds and then soak them for four hours uh, to remove all the impurities and then from there transfer to what we call a germination chamber for two days and that helps uh, the seeds to sprout. Then after that it's when you transfer them to the chemically treated trays and then the, that's where they grow from. Now the cycle of seven days begins when you transfer to the chemically treated trays. Uh, you have to add, uh, of course, the hydroponics nutrients again in your water when you're watering at least three times per day. Uh, the major advantage of hydroponics uh, for that is that uh, one, it's highly digestible, so uh, the livestock are able to digest it very well, and then it's uh, rich in protein, so there is uh, uh, increased output in the livestock when you feed uh, the fodder uh, to the livestock. So the, the shorter cycle ensures you save on labor and then again you also save on water and the time that uh, you take to grow uh, other conventional feeds. So fodder should take 70% uh, of your feed. The 30% you substitute it with the, uh, say if you're feeding pigs, the pollard and something hay for cows, something dry to just reduce the rate of bloating. When you're buying, they are treated once at the point of manufacturing. So for us, uh, most farmers want to do their own makeshift, but then um, they, the, the trays then uh, rust and that's harmful to the livestock. So for us, we treat them at the point of manufacturing and then we sell the already treated trays to our farmers to use. So you can use sorghum, you can use millet, you can use wheat depending on the availability. But for best nutrition value, Bali is recommended. Uh, at day seven, you just see the growth uh, rates. Like you can see day one, it's just when you've just transferred. Day two, there's uh, some shooting and then the length will increase as the days progress. You'll see from your tray uh, how it has grown and the germination rate. That tells you the quality is good. If you can see at least a 98% uh, germination rate when you're harvesting your fodder. Uh, this requires a very uh, cold environment for the seeds to grow better. So maintaining the right temperature, most farmers have a challenge with that. But that's why you have a shade net all around. You can put a slab on top or you can put a hydro cloth on top to ensure your temperatures are okay. So how it costs it is uh, dependent on the number of livestock a farmer has. So if you have one cow, it means you're feeding one tray per day. So within a week, you need seven trays. So if you have one cow, then it means you need seven trays per week. So a tray goes for 500, but then there's the cost of the structure itself. So we'll construct a structure, say for seven trays, for 14 trays, uh, for 20 trays, depending with what you're feeding. And then now we, uh, most farmers prefer to use method because of um, its uh, durability, but still you can use wood to construct your structure. And then uh, we now supply you with the barley seeds. But of course the farmer can use any other available seed. And the barley seeds goes for 45 shillings per kg. Then you have the hydroponics uh, for the nutrients that goes for 800 shillings, 7 liters, which is very affordable. And that's now... Um, you just have to use 140 ml for every 20 liters of water. So really it sustains a farmer for quite some time. Yeah, and now the beauty of using this is that uh, you're able to save your cost of feed per day. 
um, if you're using the conventional feed, say you're feeding your poultry, uh, you realize that uh, you're using almost 70 to 75 percent. Uh, you're eating into your profits uh, up to 75 percent. But when you now introduce further, then you reduce that up to 30 to 35 percent. So you're able to make more profits and then you're able to get more uh, returns from your poultry or lifestyle called pigs. The fourth system is the greenhouse, which Emily is most passionate about. So this is an hydroponic greenhouse. Uh, it's a huge one, 8 by 30 meters. That's around uh, 240 meters squared. Um, currently, we are growing some kales, but it's best suited for tomatoes, capsicum, or even strawberries. Uh, this particular one is wooden, but you have the option of having a metallic greenhouse. Uh, though slightly expensive, it's more durable. Uh, so this uh, greenhouse, um, it's suited for guys who want to go into commercial hydroponics farming. Because of the benefits that it has. Uh, one, you're able to grow more crops, and the more crops you grow, the higher return on investment you have. So uh, if you're farming, say, an 8 by 15 uh, size of a greenhouse, which is half of this, you're able to recoup your initial investment uh, second season. Uh, that's say uh, if you're planting tomatoes, uh, your season will be for like six months and uh, you invest around 30,000 in your initial investment and after one season, um, you've been able to uh, recoup to 80,000. Meaning the second season, you've already recouped your uh, investments that you made. So for people who want to do commercial hydroponics greenhouse, this is the best um, type of farming. Uh, one, limited pest and diseases because there's a pest net all around to avoid uh, pests from coming in, meaning um, you're not going to spray and you're going to have better uh, production. And then uh, you can use uh, a big tank and the drip lines, that's how, that's how you do your irrigation. Uh, meaning you're saving on labor and also saving on the water consumption. So as we mentioned, you have to mix your nutrients in the tank and they flow together in the water each and every crop. So what advice does Emily have for aspiring hydroponics farmers? are not recommended uh, for a farmer to move their crops from soil to hydroponics farming uh, because even when you are planting seedlings you plant uh, we plant them in what we call uh, cocoa pit uh, that's not soil uh, because when you transfer from soil to hydroponics it means you're transferring the diseases that are in soil into hydroponics so your crops may not do so well so you'd advise a customer if you want to uh, fully go into hydroponics then the seedlings in uh, cocoa pit then transfer them into the media that you're using for hydroponics just to reduce on the pest and diseases. Um, hydroponics is an interesting uh, type of farming because uh, it's been embraced by everyone. Uh, the old, the young, the youth, this is the type of farming that uh, anyone should adopt. Uh, one, it's um, easy, it's a simplified unit, anybody can operate it. And then there's higher returns when you do hydroponics farming as compared to what you do in the soil. So anyone who has issues with their soil, then hydroponics farming is the solution. Save on time, you save on labor, you'll get increased output. There's feeding, meaning you're just going to be a happy farmer when you do hydroponics farming. Mm -hmm.